Good morning, everyone, and welcome to this live intraday strategy webinar on SB Trade Desk. Today is Tuesday, or Wednesday rather, July 22nd, and I'm Michael Boutros. Good to be with you guys here. Good morning, Mark, Depesh, Permendra, Eileen. Good to be with you guys this morning. Uh, Bernard, uh, Bernard, excuse me, Chintan, Andrew, great to be here. Um, Joe, good morning to you as well. So, I apologize, couldn't make it to uh, yesterday's webinar, guys. Uh, lots to cover. Obviously, the Dollar Ripper has been in focus, and I uh, put out some uh, intraday setups yesterday on yesterday's update. Look, we made an outside reversal on the index here, and I just wanted to point this out. Um, these are my favorite outside day reversals, the ones that happen at resistance. This is a multi-month, three-month high outside day reversal at resistance. So the threat for the reversal starts to mount with these types of formations. You got momentum also struggling to mount the 60. We talked about this. This has been holding 60 essentially uh, since the high that we made back in April. And that also is very suggestive that you want to be cautious near term on the long side for the dollar. Coming into some near-term support, and I'll show you the 30-minute in just a moment. That was on yesterday's scalp update as well. Uh, you're looking at a basic median line structure on the daily on the daily chart. We're just highlighting it with a basic trend line support, but on the near-term chart, uh, lower median line parallel also catching the lows here, and that's really going to be the focus today. Uh, we really want to clear below, excuse me, that swing low that we made to really start to clear the downside and get the conviction for reversal. The immediate target in such a reversal would be the median line off the lows that we made from April. Okay, and that takes you somewhere in the range of 65, 11,965, I think is what I noted on the report yesterday. So that's sort of the focus near term uh, for the dollar index. Here's what it looked like yesterday on the, on the scalp update. Okay, so here's what the daily was looking like. And again, that's the same structure we're looking at here. On the broader 30-minute chart, there's that same trend line support. It's essentially the same thing as the lower median line parallel that you're looking at here. And as we came into the 30-minute, here was the focus last night. Okay, coming into the Asia trade session, you're looking at resistance right around 22, or excuse me, 1220 or 1219. Uh, you had a basic trend line resistance off the high. You don't really stress that because it's really near term, but also a basic opening range low for the for the week. So here's what that looked like for the index, okay? And point in fact, we actually came right into that resistance. We tagged right into that in, in Asia trade. We came right back into the key support, which was again that 1200, 1194, okay? It was the swing low from that last Friday move. And that's kind of what we're consolidating into right now, okay? So the focus again, we wanna see this break here. We'll look for that move into that median line structure that we looked at on the daily chart. That would be 11,000. Like I said, it's going to be de dependent on time, obviously, uh, but right now that comes in right around 11,965. Um, and that would be the downside break that we would need to really con get the conviction for the turnaround here in the dollar. Near term, again, the risk is for a rally back in 12,019. The, the conviction for the continuation or, again, the push or the resumption for the uptrend for the dollar would still need to be this resistance that we opened up the week below. Remember, the outside reversal day that we made yesterday was up against this resistance, and that's really what's going to invalidate the bearish scenario that we're looking at right now. All right, so looking lower, too, too soon to call the reversal, but certainly we are looking lower against this near-term reversal, against this near-term resistance, rather. And again, this is going to be the bearish invalidation. This is what would be the constructive side to put us back on the continuation for the upside on the dollar. Any questions with this index? Again, we can't necessarily trade this if you're if you're on state side here in the U.S., but a great way to be able to determine just base dollar movements. At its inception, Dow Jones FXCM dollar index equally weighted, right, with the Euro, Aussie, Sterling, and Yen, the four most liquid currencies versus the greenback. So a good way just to gauge base dollar movements here. And not too surprising to see this chop action here with what we're looking at with some of the other majors. And certainly we'll go over the other ones that we covered here. Specifically in the update, didn't have too many dollar crosses uh, as much as we did um, on the crosses, rather. Not so much dollar major pairs. But uh, the sterling, the dollar yen, uh, even the euro in focus here, specifically as the dollar index continues to sort of mutter sideways. But before I move off, any questions on this?
Okay. And just to recap one thing also, the major key support on the dollar index, or if we do get the, the broader reversal here, this is going to be the major reversal or the major support that you would look for on the downside. Now it'd be 11,924, 11,934. And you can see the pivot action that we've seen in this region here. Okay, so if we do get the validation break to the downside, initial target would be the median line. Below that would be that 924, 934, 932 region right here. Keep in mind, as far as U.S. event risk is concerned, heading into the 10 o'clock hour, you do get existing home sales out of the United States, which could shake things up a little bit. Got a question here from Raj. says, Mike, what's going on with these currencies? Every trade we take, it goes our, it goes our way, I think you meant to say, to start with, and then it comes back and stops us out. Talking about the swing trades, trading has been so hard recently. So Raj, I really can't speak to the um, to the swing side of things. You're gonna want to, you know, um, get at Jamie with that. But look, Raj, you know, conditions are such, right, Raj? The market sometimes is gonna give us easy trading conditions. Sometimes it's gonna be a little bit of a chop fest. I don't want you to sit there and tra and watch the the trade. If you're trading on a little bit more of a medium term trading aspect, Raj, put your limits in, put your stops in, and let the trade pan out. Okay, sometimes the trade will come right next to your stop and, and pan out. Sometimes it'll get triggered. That's the name of the game rush, right? Over the long haul is how we want to gauge the performance of the strategy. That being said, you know, our focus here, at least my focus, is going to be in the near term. So um, I assume you're talking about the Sterling laws, and let's jump into that. That one hasn't necessarily been invalidated just yet, but certainly um, we did see that move above the upper median line parallel, and it does look a little concerning. So we'll take a look at that in a moment. But Raj, that might be a, mo a time for you where it's just worth it to take a step back, right? And kind of reassess the scenario, reassess uh, where we are, and kind of map out your levels. Um, I hear the frustration, though. I hear you. It's not always going to be, you know, ideal trading conditions, and certainly it has been very tricky. Also, Raj, this is also the time period where you want to take a step back and kind of gauge where you're looking. Um, it might be that we're shifting our attention towards pairs that might not be in our in our best interest. Um, again, I can't speak specifically towards the swing side of things, but uh, let's jump into that Sterling Oz. Raj, I still think it's a great setup. It's actually um, a little bit tricky right here, but I still think the Sterling Oz is a great setup. So let's jump into the uh, into the scalp on that front. So uh, the setup uh, from my side of things was here on the Sterling Oz. Um, another one that ha was super clear as far as the technical clarity of where we've come off of, this thing is is been textbook. Um, now, the rally that we're seeing here today extending a little bit beyond the area of resistance that we were expecting to hold. But the basic premise of this trade is, look, you came off of a very nice sliding parallel extending off the highs that you made here in uh, February. I'm missing one of my monthly markers here. Um, and that one had a really nice reaction, okay? You saw a nice reaction off that high, you pushed back below the high day close for the year, back below the upper median line parallel, okay? Momentum came off 70, and on the near term, there was a structure to the downside that looked like it was pretty nice in play. Here's what it looked like, okay? You had some divergence into the highs, and at the end of the day, we were looking for that what was that, uh, 21, I'm sorry, 211.20 to be our near-term bearish invalidation level. We're looking for shorts against that. So here's what the Sterling Aussie looks like first on the daily, and then we'll move into the 30-minute. So again, you had that really compelling move to the upside and a nice confluence region here, a basic channel resistance. Again, here's the formation that we were working with for a multi-multi-month. I guess at this, year, at this standpoint, you could say multi-year. Uh, this dates back to the 2014. Um, calendar year towards the end of the year there some parallels off that same slope have served us very well okay and there's the the sliding parallel off the highs and you can see if you extrapolate that off the high they made in July it caught the exact high here in February and again the exact highs here back on the stretch in July so on the pullback you were looking for this to give us a a trigger break below this trend line which I noted in yesterday's report and you had basic channel support, and that was a little bit more of a deeper target, and that was going to take you back basically into 208, just beyond that, 
207.90 was going to actually be last week's stretch low. Okay, so that was sort of the uh, longer term target. Here's what it looked like on the near term. Okay, and as long as we held within this formation, as we noted in yesterday's scalp, uh, we wanted to look for shorts. Now, it just so happened that the only short that you were able to squeeze out on this yesterday, uh, and actually the only short I took on it, was off the back of the CPI print from Australia. CPI came in much weaker than expected across the board. So here's what that data print looked like. So CPI quarter on quarter came in at 0.7%. You're expecting 0.8. Year on year came in at 1.5. You're expecting 1.7. Okay. Um, and even the trimmed mean, um, well, that came in pretty much at expectations. Uh, but long story short, weaker than expected CPI. We've been seeing even some comments from Glenn Stevens saying that there's room for additional cuts. And certainly that puts the RBA on a path of possible continued easing. So what does that mean? Near term, the reaction was further weakness in the Aussie. And you saw a huge spike to the upside in Sterling Oz that came right into that sort of sweet spot of which we were looking for short exposure. So this was actually a really, really nice entry. Uh, the five minute, unfortunately, didn't really give you too much of a compelling trigger. The actual only trigger in the five minute was the break below um, 70. So the only scalp here was a, a quick trigger here to jump in on the short. The stop was actually against this region. So it's a little bit bigger of a stop, but you have a much bigger ATR here. Remember, we're looking for about a quarter of the daily ATR on average per scalp. So if the daily ATR is 100 pips, you're looking for about 25 pips per, per scalp. And as such, your stops can't be any larger than that. Obviously, we're always going to try to increase our risk reward better than one to one if possible, but that's the maximum. So um, jumped in really quick on a, on a short there with a stop against that region. Uh, I think it was against 211.30 is where I had it, um, which was just against that swing high. And as soon as we had, I think 55 pips is where I jumped out, just ahead of that, uh, ahead of that near-term support. So ever since then, there hasn't really been many short triggers to work with. And um, on the way up here through initial resistance, again, looking for some resistance, didn't get it. And on this last break here, here we are on the upside. The last ditch effort, by the way, this was the near-term bearish invalidation level. So at this point, from a scalping standpoint, you're not really looking for short triggers anymore. Okay. Remember, since the start of the week, and one of the things that we noted in yesterday's scalp was the momentum signature looked pretty bearish, right? You started the week, you held 60 on that last bounce, you broke well below oversold conditions, and you kind of want to see 60 hold on this last rebound. Here we are breaking above. So I'd really need to get a pretty compelling short signal somewhere below 2140, and I'd really need to get back below this region. Whoops, did not mean to do that. Sorry, guys, do not like to mess with my fibs. I'd need to get back below this region to get back on the, uh, to favor the short size again. And I need to see momentum start to dip back below 40. So I'm kind of on pause here in Sterling Oz. The only short we took yesterday, again, like I said, was on the back of that release. And, um, you know, we'll see if we can find some resistance at, up at 20 uh, or 212, rather. 212.05 is the actual stretch high that we made here on the 21st, which was yesterday. Okay, I think the uh, swing trades, uh, their stop, I think, is uh, 212.10, which is just above that swing high as well. So, Raj, does that help? Does that offer some clarity here on Sterling Oz? And it can get frustrating at times, Raj, but... Um, you know, you got to look at the broader the broader sense of things. Trades aren't going to always jump into the position that moves right in your favor, right? Um, you got to look at the broader the broader gauge of the performance over time. So stick with it, brush your sh brush your uh, shoulders off, and uh, the market will always offer more uh, more opportunities. Don't let it get you down. Any questions on this Sterling Oz setup? He says, yeah, but it keeps happening recently. I guess I just got to be patient. Yeah, Raj, it can be very frustrating, man. He says, sounds good. I hear you, brother. I hear you. Trust me. I've been doing this long enough. <laughs> uh, 
So we'll be broadly looking for this. Keep in mind, uh, from the UK side of things, as far as the event risk is concerned, you're pretty limited there. You do have on tap tomorrow. Uh, well, let me take a step back. You get the BOE uh, minutes, which came out today. Tomorrow, you do get the retail sales data uh, for the month of June. We are expecting a nice snapback there after a disappointing month last month, year on year, stripping out uh, fuel car core retail sales expected to come in at 5.1% tomorrow for um, for the month of June. So we'll be looking at those numbers tomorrow morning at uh, 4.30 a.m. here in New York. So we'll go over those results tomorrow in the webinar. But that is Sterling Oz. And again, I'm not completely ruling this one out. We'll still see if we can squeeze something out of this as we head into the U.S. session. I'm not quite buying this uh, this breakout here just yet. And if you look at the Aussie dollar too, just objectively speaking, um, you know, again, like I said, you got that snapback yesterday and some of the comments coming out of Stevens and some of those weak CPI numbers, but you haven't really done much as far as price is concerned to invalidate or, or signal continuation of the broader downtrend yet. This is what I'm looking at, and this is kind of what I've been looking at for the last couple of days. Um, this trigger here off the highs from May. You know, you kind of made a run out of yesterday. Didn't quite get through. So this, for me, will kind of be a signal um, that we may see a little bit more of a, of a concerted recovery here near term for the Aussie. And again, that would give us, you know, a little bit more of a, of a downside pressure for the Sterling Oz. All right. Last but not least, the, Ster the Aussie Kiwi setup, which we've been following on the uh, intraday charts for the last couple of days, um, kind of ran out of steam. You know, it was a really beautiful setup to open up the week and even into the close of last week. I mean, this thing surged right through all of the last... Uh, top side targets. If you guys recall, we were following this into last week, uh, into the close of last week. The last top side target that we had even noted was 113.48. Um, so we kind of came right into that towards the end of the week, and then we came off on Friday. So here's sort of a quick update on where we are in Aussie Key. Here's the daily chart. <clears throat> so the pullback in the ma major area of support, uh, if you guys saw Monday's webinar on daily effects, 111.50, 111.60, still the area of support that we're looking for. And not just, again, the stress of necessarily the monthly pivot, but basic trend line support off the May low. Again, the slope lines and the, the, the um, well, the slope uh, that we've been following since the lows here from early 2014 is continue to offer guidance and that continues to reside right in that same region where that channel support and that monthly pivot sit. So that's still going to be the near-term focus uh, on the intraday charts or the 30-minute. You also still have um, a basic, well, it's the same slope, excuse me, same slope is right in that region as well and a basic 618 retracement of the ascent from the lows of the month comes right into that region as well, okay? So one thing that we noted also, that momentum has continued still to fail to break 60 to the upside on the rebound. So it still keeps the pressure to the downside, but the downside bias is at risk while above this region. So we're, we're cautiously looking lower, but I haven't taken any shorts since that last run, of, run into this region. This is kind of still the region that we need to be to favor the downside. You could get some more rebounds off this region. Uh, at this point, yesterday we lowered the bearish invalidation level to 112.78. At this point, I feel pretty comfortable lowering that level even more um, to right around 112.40, essentially the upper median line parallel for the broader formation. Um, and as long as we stay below that, we'll still favor uh, the short side, but we need to get through that 112. Uh, 111.50, 111.60 range to really get the continuation. Uh, soft target at 111.31 that we noted last week. He did get some play off that actually, but um, really the major key support is basically just below 111, 110.95, 110.92, uh, or 94 rather. And then obviously, <coughs> excuse me, the lows of the month and a nice 100% extension comes in just below 110, 109.96.
So still looking for short triggers here, and there's actually one that's in play right off the lows. That looks pretty good. As far as the five minutes concerned on Aussie Key, low in price, that would be the trigger. That's your London low right there. And this is your Tokyo and Sydney highs. So not a bad setup actually heading into the US session. Remember the only thing on this one is that the uh, ATR is actually pretty tight. Uh, or at least tighter than the Sterling Oz we were just looking at. So you're only looking about 28 pips per scalp on this one. So keep that in mind when you're putting in your, uh, your stops and uh, your uh, subsequent targets as well. But that's sort of what we'll be scoping out as we head into the start of U.S. Uh, trade for the Aussie key. Any questions on this setup as well? It's been a little bit of a snoozer here. Uh, you did get a play off of the, again, that weaker than expected CPI data out of uh, Aussie last night on a spike into that major key support again it held. But that's really the major level to beat here for Aussie key. All right, so those are the three setups that we've been following, um, or I've been trading at least most aggressively on the scalp side of things uh, from the updated targets. Mark Haverman saying dollar CAD going bonkers. Let's jump into the dollar CAD real quick. I was going to put that on the radar, guys, but I really, I don't have anything uh, from a near-term target or any type of near-term trade to make on this. It's just... It just keeps rallying. There's not much <laughs> to do from a near-term target. And not only that, the ATR has been kind of contracting. I mean, you get these spikes and the move, and then it sits in a real tight range. Then you get a massive stretch move, and then it sits in a tight range. So listen, um, man, this is something I had a really great discussion on with one of the other guys on, a, on one of the other bank desks um, I was having lunch with yesterday. And, you know, just knowing direction, guys, it's not the trade. You know what I mean? Knowing the direction is 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 fifty percent of the game. A lot of the guys would say, no, 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 no. Knowing the direction is seventy percent of the game. And then you know, risk management, entry, exit, that's thirty percent. I would say the opposite. I would say knowing direction is only fifty percent. Because big whoop, if I know the direction, I take along at the high of the day, and I have no risk management. Where the heck do I put my stop? Or, um, I mean, it's all about risk management. Again, I want to get off topic. But long story short, um, the setup is all about having proper entry and proper risk management. The bias or the direction is only half the game. So, and I, and I only say this here, Mark, because, again, I don't really have a setup for this. Um, you know, objectively, well, let me take a step back. Objectively, uh, if we break through this, I guess you could say, um, you know, on a holistic basis, on an objective basis, this would be considered a break of the weekly opening range, and you would be long against the lows. But for me, that's putting, you know, um, basically a hundred pip stop. Uh, as far as your limits concerned, I do have a target up here at 3070, which is 50 pips away. So right off the bat, you're working with a horrible risk to reward ratio. You're risking double what you're looking to make. So I don't know how you would work with that, but um, it's tough. He says, wondering how much auto trading is affecting these odd, quick back and forth moves. Yeah, Eileen, I mean, I don't even try to think of that or filter that in my thought process. I don't, I don't see much, uh, much merit or what's the word I'm looking for? Much benefit to that kind of thinking, Eileen. Yeah, it's probably there. It's probably affecting intraday price action for sure. Um, how do I profit off that? I have no idea. So look, 130.60 is going to be the 2009 high. Like I said, that's sort of the next thing in, in sight. Uh, 130.76 just beyond that is actually also a 2618 extension from the advance off the June low. So I do have some levels that are sort of in view, but, um, 
from a trading standpoint, there's not really a setup for me here on this one, Mark. Keep in mind also for uh, Canada, you do have retail sales on tap tomorrow. We are expecting a nice snapback in retail sales also. Here's what those numbers are expected to look like tomorrow. Got a negative contraction in retail sales last month, month on month contraction of 0.1%, year on year contraction, or excuse me, core contraction of 0.6. Expected to see a snapback in both of those for the month of May. So those numbers get released tomorrow morning. So depending on where we are positioning wise, you know, maybe we'll have a play on this, but you know, intraday price action, near term price action hasn't been all that compelling from my standpoint to really offer any type of setup uh, on dollar CAD. So Mark, I wish I had some more something more compelling for you, man, but um I just don't, <laughs> you know, even from the momentum signature, it does look like it's turned back to the uh, constructive side of things. You know, we started the the the, the week sub uh, 60, you know, holding 40, sub 60. Here's the 40 break. That didn't last too long here. And here's a 60 break to the upside. So, you know, if anything sideways to a slow mutter higher is what I would expect. Um, Mark says, oh, it's okay. I caught the downside yesterday and then went long at the close. Uh, still trailing half. Nice move. Gutsy move, Mark. And again, I guess real near term, if you're watching this on a five minute, and if you're trading sheer momentum, uh, sure, you could probably get some play out of it. But he says there was the RSI divergence on the four hour chart. Let's do it. Sure. So this is what um, Mark is talking about, guys. Here's price action making a higher high, higher high, the oscillator equal to lower highs. Remember, it doesn't necessarily need to be lower highs, but all you're looking for is the oscillator not to prove or not to uh, illustrate or show or confirm an extreme in price. And a quick way to be able to reference this a lot quicker is just to bring this into a line chart. And that's showing you the close much easier to readily identify higher highs in, in price, equal or lower highs in the oscillator. So definitely see that. Um, you know, I personally would still need a trigger to jump into a position like that, some sort, and actually had one. Not bad. <clears throat> Not bad in that, Mark. He says, even line from 7.5. RSI line from 7.5. Oh, the high. I have it at 7.7, but yeah, I see what you're saying. Sure. Yep. So even from this high, right? Higher high, higher high, higher high. Even from this high, you're making a lower high, lower high, lower high. Absolutely. Sure. Not bad, Mark. <clears throat> Not bad. My only question to you is this, Mark, real quick. And I just want to pick your strategy just so I can make sure we're on the same page here. As far as your profit target, on, excuse me, on a move like that, how are you deducing that? So when you take that trigger short, let's say you did take that move, your stop is against the highs. What's your profit on that? What's your objective? How are you deducing that? You're just looking for price to turn. And when you see price action start to change, you're jumping out of the position. Okay, I hear you. So you're a little bit more of a of a true uh, price action trader. Hey, if it makes if it works, it works. I'm with you. No one follows price action closer than we do, my man. All right. So that is uh, dollar CAD. Pramendra says, thank you for dollar cat. Hey, you're more than welcome. Raja got you. Can you look at dollar yen? Sure, can. So um, on yesterday's radar charts, um, I did highlight dollar yen and sterling dollar. So 
uh, Sterling Dollar actually made a phenomenal move, and I probably should have put the scalp chart on there as well for you guys, but the uh, levels are updated from the, what day was that? I have put it on here for you. Seven nineteen. The update from seven nineteen. All the levels are still live from that uh, sterling dollar chart. But let's start with the uh, dollar yen. So dollar yen. The focus on this still remains one twenty four thirteen, one twenty four thirty five. It's funny because this was one of the trades I was talking with the, um, that buddy of mine from uh, the bank trading desk, and this was the discussion that we were having, where we were talking about having, you know, one side of the equation was just the 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 bias, the other was um, risk management. Look for dollar yen. 124.13, 124.35 was the level I was focused on, and that's really just the 2007 stretch high. Uh, that's what the 100 is here. You also had a 1618 extension off the low, which came in at 124.35. You had the swing high that you made there towards the end of, uh, what is that, uh, June trade. Um, and you also had a median line, a sliding parallel here for the current structure that we're in, which also came right into that region. Here's what dollar yen looks like right now. Okay, so again, the 2007 high, the swing highs that you made there in June, and the 1618, there's that sliding parallel for the for the operative structure, which again, takes into account all of trading for this year so far, okay? One thing I also wanted to note is that momentum signature, after you came into that 60 hold, or that 40 hold, rather, momentum, here's the signature turning over ahead of 60. This is something that we'll want to pay attention to, and the trigger for the continuation to the upside would be a breach above 16 momentum and a break above this region here to the upside. Okay, that's what I need to see to mark continuation or resumption for the broader uptrend here in dollar yen. Barring that, the upside is at risk. Okay, and why did we start looking lower? Why are we trying to be the guys calling or at least looking lower in dollar yen near term? Very simple, for the same reason we we're looking on the dollar index. You made an outside day reversal candle at monthly high resistance. Threatens near-term reversal. These are the best case scenarios for these outside reversal candles. A lot of times you'll see people looking at you know outside reversal candles um, at the lows. Um, there'll be, for example, a um, a candle that is bearish, an outside reversal candle that is bearish at the low. Okay, that's not going to be something that's um, be that'll be operable for me. Okay, so if we add a, re uh, a rebound in price, then you get an outside reversal candle that takes you into a new low. That's not something that's going to be as um, technically significant as something that happens here on the highs. Now, to be fair, it's not always going to develop into a full-on pullback. And I'll bring your attention to early June when we saw an outside reversal candle at the highs right here. And that pullback didn't materialize into much. He had a two-day pullback here before we inevitably pulled into a new high. And then we inevitably did see a little bit more of a material substantiated correction. Okay, Could be the case, might not be the case. All we know is that this happened at resistance, at the monthly high, momentum is at resistance, or just ahead of, and near term, the rally is at risk below 124.13, 124.35. Okay, here's what the intraday chart looks like for dollar yen. So, <clears throat> from an opening range standpoint, again, um, it does look like you made an initial break of the weekly opening range low, and objectively, below 124, again, you're looking lower. So, the momentum signature, sure, you spend some time above 60 here, but there's your break below 40 and break into oversold territory. We'll want to see this rally in momentum fail at 60, and we'll be looking for short triggers below 124. Near-term support targets, you're basically looking at 123.50. You're looking at 123, and then a little bit more of a critical support at 122.40, uh, which has been a pretty decent pivot in price and these lows that you made here back in early June.
So for dollar yen, again, a little too early to call the reversal full on, but at least the initial signs are there for this thing to possibly start to show us a little bit more of a reversal trade, looking to sell rallies below 124, and again, looking for those things on the daily chart to really give us a little bit more of a conviction reversal trade uh, with a hole below this region. Now, as I said, 122 um, or what, the 123 handle, oops, uh, 122.90 on that break below 123.50 right here, that also coincides with this region right here, which is basically lower median line parallel support and that sliding parallel extending off the lows from May. Gives you a nice cushion region here of support. Okay, and this is the break that would give us, you know, a little bit more conviction for a sharper, sharper, sharper pullback here in dollar yen. Near term, this is still within the confines of the broader uptrend that we're working off of the lows here from May. So this is still within the confines within the confines of the broader uptrend. So even if this does look pull back here and we're playing the short side down here, we'd look to reassess, we'd look for possible re-entry on the long side for dollar yen. Any questions? Let me snap those lines for you actually to make this a little clearer here for you. There we go. Any questions on dollar yen? Looks good. I'm sure from 124.38. Oh, my man, you got a great entry on that. Well done. Well done, Bernard. Yeah, you got it right from in there. Nice. So let me ask you a question on that, Bernard. What are you looking to do with that position? Is that a position that you're looking to take for a longer term position? Is that position on, on a scalp basis? Because, you know, you, you're basically almost completed a 236. And I would just caution you on, you know, holding that position for too long because we don't have the validation for the reversal yet. So I'd hate to see that wash out. So I would be looking to just to manage that position as we get through these targets. Watch 123.50, watch 123, 122.90. Um, I think that's going to be, again, like I said, your initial area of some interesting support there for um, dollar yen, at least on the near term, at least on the near term. Have 25% left. All right, awesome, awesome. So you've already shaved off some, taking some profits. Awesome, Bernard. Following the rule book, man, nice. Well done, sir. Well done. <clears throat> All right. Last but not least, uh, the other chart that was on the radar chart highlighted from last night was the British pound. So this sucker was coming right into a nice consolidation zone. And the major play here uh, was really the breakout of this region. So if you guys remember back on Sunday, the uh, update for the British pound is really highlighting this key resistance zone that we had come into, which was defined by the upper median line parallel for the formation that we were in off the monthly, off the yearly highs, excuse me, that we made back here in May and June, and basic trend line support extending off the April low, which came into a confluence region here just ahead of 157. It was 156.70 and change. Um, we came off that region, uh, we came right into the median line off the lows from the January calendar month, and we kind of just continued to consolidate right into that little corner. And you might have sensed my frustration from the note, something's got to give here. <laughs> we were basically looking for that consolidation range to give us some sort of pop. Well, that's the pop, okay? So um, patience pays in some, in some instances, and uh, there was the consolidation. You saw that, again, come into this uh, real, I mean, essentially this thing came right into the apex, and there's the pop to the upside. So here's what the scalp looks like, and... Let me, again, snap these trend lines for you. All right, right on. 
<clears throat> okay. So here's your weekly open. As long as you're holding within the confines of this uh, formation, you're essentially looking lower. But 155.10, okay, uh, was going to be the key support level of which we were actually looking for some long exposure. Uh, if you recall, 155.10 was actually last week's open. Uh, the momentum signature continued to hold 40 as support, so you really couldn't get uh, the validation for the downside break. Uh, also note that the momentum, or price rather, excuse me, continued to hold the median line off of last week's high here with pretty nice precision, specifically on this last bounce. So as you came into the Asia Pack session last night, uh, you saw this thing continue to consolidate into the upper median line parallel, and again, right into the open, right ahead of the open of Europe last night, uh, there's that 60 break in momentum to the upside, and there's the validation of the break back above 155.80, 155.87. So at this point, you're essentially looking for a rally into 157 for the British pound. Uh, you might find some resistance near those Friday highs right ahead of one, uh, like I said, 156.75, um, uh, 156.80, this region right here. But essentially, 157 is the rally that you're looking for here for the pound. And again, that's a 100% extension from the advance off the lows for the month. My favorite setups, guys. And key 618 retracement from the decline off of the June highs. Okay, that's basically the risk for the British pound here for the upside. Near term, there is a trigger here that you do want to be mindful of. I don't want to stress that low because it's not the low in price, so I'm going to work with this one right now. It's the near-term support trigger I'd be working with if you're holding any long exposure on the pound. But, <clears throat> excuse me, I'd still be looking to buy pullbacks as long as you hold above, uh, let's call it 55.50, or essentially today's uh, low in price. And again, the biggest risk for the pound over the next 24 hours is essentially going to be uh, the retail sales data that comes out tomorrow from the UK. Some further jawboning um, from the BOE that they're uh, concerned about the inflationary picture running out of hand. You know, as far as historically speaking, the BOE has kind of uh, historically fallen behind the curve as, as it stands with uh, the inflation picture. So... It's going to be interesting to see if they do really have concerns about falling be behind the curve on inflation. I still stand behind my comments early in the year, guys, that next to the Fed, the BOE is probably best poised to begin normalizing monetary policy. And if that's the case, um, you know, look for the uh, pound to remain pretty well supported. Okay, 157 being the highlighted key resistance here for the sterling. Any questions on the pound? All right, so we'll keep the pound on the radar. Same thing with the dollar yen. We're looking for both of those to really clear these ranges with a little bit more of a definitive move. 157 being the major resistance that we need to clear on the pound and on dollar yen to the south side, 123 being the major support that we want to get through uh, to get the reversal trade confirmed on that side as well. For the dollar index, as we get deeper into the session, uh, for that front, <clears throat> excuse me, um, A little lag here, sorry about that. Watch that trend line support. Again, the major key focus here is going to be that trend line off the lows, 11,965. If we push below that trend line support on a closed basis, look for that as a target on the downside. And again, that'll be the reversal trade confirmation that we need for the index. Dollar Yen and the Dow Jones FXCM dollar index have both made the outside reversal candles on the close yesterday. So those are the major two that we'll want to see follow through on to get the push through on that side. Would you take a short here for dollar yen? 10 pip stop loss, says Mark. Based on what, Mark? Um, so no, to answer your question bluntly, no. Um, he says luck, question mark, LOL. Uh, I don't 
trade based on luck, man. I ba I trade based on strategy and discipline, right? So um, <laughs> if there's something there, there's something there. If there's not something there, there's not something there, right? Uh, there's got to be a trigger for me to jump into the position. Again, I, I, I try to avoid those kinds of those kinds of impulse trades, guys, at all costs, because in the long run, you know, it's going to hurt you more than it's going to help you. So maybe there is a trade there. Maybe there isn't. But for me, there needs to be something that I can point to and said, hey, Mike, this is why I took that position. Here's why I took the position. If I can't look back at price and point to something and say, here's why I, I pushed the sell button, then to me, exactly, Mark, exactly what you're saying here is gambling, right? And I'm not in the business of gambling, right? Um, so to answer your question, yeah, there's not really a trade for me right here. Um, so we'll see if we get into the U.S. session. And again, we're, we're still 15 minutes ahead of the U.S. open. So we could have a little bit more chop here, another push into a high. And it could set up into a nice opening range trade. I don't know. Uh, but we'll let that pan out. Um, Kyle says, how would you interpret the RSI divergence in the five-minute chart for the sterling dollar? Let's take a look. Right. Um, so that's ongoing divergence, right? Uh, let me ask you a question, Kyle. I'm not sure what you're asking here. How would you interpret the RSI divergence on the five-minute chart? I'm not sure what you mean. So this is ongoing divergence, right? And this is all it's telling me is that the upward thrust in the market, the push that the market has to the upside is waning, right? Um, the fact that the rally here and in price, we continue to push higher. And again, bring this into a close whenever you're sort of wondering whether you're actually seeing divergence or not. Quickest ways is to bring it to a line chart. Yes, higher high, higher high, higher high. I am seeing a series of lower highs. And like I said earlier in the session, even if they were equal highs, that's divergence. But the fact that these highs are all sub 60 is also telling me something. Right, Kyle? It's telling me definitely that there is waning momentum to the upside. So let's take a look back at the British pound. And to me, that's suggestive that we are seeing some resistance here. Now, the initial weekly opening range comes in just lower. Just take a quick fib here. Maybe there's a Fibonacci relationship that we're working with. And look at that, 786 catching the highs almost to the pip. All right, so there's 786 retracement. That's the exact Friday swing high, and that's exactly what we're catching right now. You're seeing some divergence uh, even on the 30 minute, but also on the five, right? And here's your trigger. That's your trade setup right there heading into the U.S. session. A downside trigger and momentum here and a downside trigger <clears throat> uh, of a break, uh, excuse me, of the U.S. opening range low. You have a short against the highs. The only problem with this trade setup, guys, is that the initial target on the move would only be right around the 156 handle. And you're looking for about 28 pips and your stops would be, need to be at least 28 pips on the inside. And it would be. So a scalp like this would make sense. Uh, it's just that for me, I'd, mad, I'd rather be buying pullbacks than necessarily selling rallies, okay? So that's the only thing, because remember, if this breakout is legit and we are breaking out of this near-term formation, you'd look to be buying pullbacks in price as opposed to selling rallies. That being said, a scalper standpoint is that we have that flexibility, right? I can sell rallies into resistance. I can buy dips into support. So if you're nimble, sure, that's a position you could be... Uh, you can definitely be looking at as we head into the U.S. session, Kyle, no problems. Make sense? So it just means the thrust higher is weak. It means the momentum is waning, Kyle. Does that make sense? Yeah, you're, 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 on, the right, you're on the right track with that. I want to make sure we're on the same page with that, Kyle. He says, thanks, Mike. Perfect, exclamation point. All right, right on. All right, guys, so if there are no more questions here, we'll go ahead and wrap things up. We'll be back on tomorrow morning, 8.30, same time, same channel, uh, hopefully with some more setups 
Don't forget at 1 p.m. Eastern today, uh, Jamie Setley is going to be on with his midweek strategy webinar to go over some of the setups he's been following. Um, and we'll see. Maybe that Sterling Laws will still be in. This move here does bode well. Does bode well. Remember, that stop is still at 1... Uh, 112.10. So uh, Raj, as far as that position is concerned, looks like he might see that one hold as well. So I wouldn't get too concerned as far as that's uh, in play. But uh, Jamie will be on at 1 p.m., guys, later today. So don't forget that. And I will see you bright and early tomorrow morning at 8.30. Till then, best of luck trading. Again, keep in mind for the uh, UK crosses, guys, retail sales figures hit tomorrow morning at 4.30 Eastern here in New York um, and could cause uh, some added volatility in some of those sterling crosses. So till then, best of luck trading, guys, and I will see you tomorrow. Cheers.